All right, let's get started, finally. All right, I finally have some time to get back to doing a little streaming again. All right, bring up screen. Bring up face. All right, screencast keys, uh, and they are on. All right, you'll be able to see whatever it is I'm doing. Actually, I gotta keep remembering to turn that on as I'm switching between projects. I'm gonna work on a few little things, just for fun. I do have another weapon design, probably gonna start later. Okay, yeah, I know I know Blender really hates the dense polygons, but uh she just had a weird concept idea and I wanted to try it. modifiers do I have on this? Okay, no. <laughs> but it was giving me bus with like a bunch of decimation modifiers. I will steal this. Let's do a new project. No, don't save this. Delete this. And control V. I have a hand. I want to do something weird with this hand into geometry, selection to cursor. Is there a good way to do a close halls operation in Blender real quick? Go to edge select mode. This is a bunch of voxels. All right, what if I do select, select all by trait? I want to close this hole just in case I want to do a remesh or do some more uh, Dynatop. Okay, select all by trait. How about non-manifold? Let's see if I just crash Blender uh, instantly by trying to close this. All right, first I'll do a extrude, scale that inward, scale it to zero, and I close it, and then hit Control T to triangulate it. All right, and then let's go to sculpt mode. Let's hit this with uh, Simplify. Turn on Dynatopo. Yeah, am I getting like even more ostentatious to just kind of slap my logo on the wall behind me now while I still have 
heavy, warbling in the background. Is it too much at this point? I don't think so. All right. You can do constant detail. Let's up that to a lot. Uh, 500? Do I need to use my tablet? And I have a gigantic mess of pens and everything on the desks. And there's my stylus. Okay. Okay, a little faceted, but I don't care too much about that. That even more. And then just move it a little bit. Yes, I have this little dismembered hand. Did I get symmetry? I don't want symmetry. Just make it a little gnarled, a little visceral. Yep, yep, my whole Discord community is going to stick with that. Of course, I had to play into it. So I'm just as much to blame. Hey, Margo, what's going on? Uh, sick today. Yeah, I had, a, I had some. I had kind of a bad sit week, uh, sick week. A while ago. Got a little bit of clipping here. That's fine. Don't know what it was, but of course this was just enough to make trying to work at stuff from home all the more difficult. Of course. Like you can really get a day off. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yes, I am gonna ignore you after all that, Victor. know what you did. Do I, need you, do I need to put you in timeout? I'm kidding. I have no idea.
So Hale, you better not. Why? Yes, Sahail already beat you to it, Victor. So Hale already beat you to commenting on the logo on the wall with the same thing that all of you in my Discord know. What do you think I can do with them? Does the CCP cap emoji work on YouTube as well?
I, th I guess I need to look at the actual uh, stream rather than the uh, dashboard. this to a curve. Do it. Do it. He'll make it work. Give him your credit card number. Do it. I am just messing around with this disembodied hand. What does it look like I'm doing?
Can we export FPX models with default material and see the bloom effect with Windows default 3D viewer? Bloom effect. Does the Microsoft default 3D viewer even support bloom? I don't know. I've, I hardly ever use the default 3D viewer in Microsoft, except like if I was, I guess, double clicked on an asset in Unity or something. I don't even, I, I don't even really know how to make it show like textures or materials. Hey, Stefan. What's going on? this quick save call it weirdo hand project okay weirdo hand project dot blend sounds good Adobe Stager. Okay, so I haven't really followed. They they released that when they acquire all the uh, substance stuff. So is it like a? I haven't followed it at all. Is it like a, a Marmoset competitor sort of uh, sort of application? It is a Marmoset competitor.
Have I heard of Spark AR? No, what's that? drive me crazy. Let me just separate this darn plane. For exploring augmented reality, I tried to export one of my Blender models there, but wasn't able to get the texture and emission right.
that. Click on the viewport, create a different texture. Hey, what's going on? smooth I want that after this little displacement thing I'm doing here but also after the remesh here. Yeah, much less warbly. It's doing fine. My computer is doing just fine. Yeah, it's doing just fine. The PSU is not screaming kill me, so I think I'm good. Package or
go. Vertigo. Alright. Yes, I have an idea of where I'm going with this weird little prop at the moment. Then once I'm done toying around with this thing, I have another little weapon design project that I want to get into. And we'll see. And I'm just happy to be able to chill streaming once again. It was pretty busy again for a while. But hopefully just have some more time to dig into things now. Honestly, where I'm going with this is, I don't know, I had this slightly weirder idea or take on a health item for a video game which it's this idea of these protein synthesizers you, which are uh, recycling pieces of Viseria. I know, a, a little bit morbid. See, that's one thing, I don't know why the the uh, auto angle sharpen on hard ops does this sometimes. Where it detects just about all of these angles and gives them a sharp, but as you can see it, did, it doesn't do this complete circle here. I don't know why it just all of a sudden leaves a few edges uh, unmarked when I want them marked and a few edges marked when I don't want them. Just correct that. And I am still just using the uh, LTS version Blender uh, 2.93. I think that's what I'm using. Yeah, it, it's something. It's something about the whole angle detection method. I don't know if it, um, if it's something with like how it prioritizes, sort of detecting all the edges, or or what. All right. 
How quick can I just retopologize this thing? Okay, now I don't like I don't like these kind of weird faceted edge right here. How can I correct this? Slightly better. Blender still wants to complain with me. Okay, now I know I've had some difficulty in the past using things like a uh, retopo flow whenever I have sort of these, uh, like an area where it has a very thin mesh on it. So, might just use kind of a traditional retopology workflow right here.
put the cursor back to the center of the world origin. Let's create a plane. Scale that down. Rotate that 90 degrees. All right. And turn the snap two on. Let's also give it, have we done too much? Supposed to add this earlier. All right. Also, give it a shrink wrap. Have it so that we can edit that geometry directly, and let's make it so that we're just seeing this in front. this clip for right now because with the snap to it'll still go to that surface I'm trying to read to apologize I just wanted to use the shrink wrap for right now Let's see how much is it gonna complain with me all right not too much Go back to medium point.
give this a display color so I'm seeing it in front. Turn off the snap too. just the same on this side and then we have to uh, basically just connect it up. And real quick I'll hide this because basically this uh, weird package working on here the entire item if I go into edit mode is still just a single plane. Everything for this part is generated through the modifiers and of course being shrink wrapped onto that base mesh hand sculpt that I have underneath everything. But as far as this concerned, this is still just started with a single plane, so pretty non-destructive in making all that. I'm gonna hide the other side real quick. this little extra one here, dissolve that edge, do the same thing here, bridge edge loops.
me in trouble right there. see if possible if I can just make this match up to the other side as well probably can't but Doing the regular uh, retopology workflows working out pretty well for me. I've also had a few issues while trying to uh, use retopa flow for a few things. Where after uh, after it's complete, I just seem to have like a lot of areas where there's well, the normals are flipped in the wrong direction or. Things didn't exactly connect the right way. Honestly, you, you gotta check it for uh, for any non-manifold geometry afterwards when you're doing everything in top of flow. I mean, it's great for like, it, it's really good for like the character work. But I've had certain items, certain small items that have either needed to be sculpted or created for like a lot of uh, modifiers or like weapon design parts and then I have to retopologize them like this I've just been encountering quite a few issues on uh, on the retopa flow end okay so see this vertices for some reason because it's a very thin mesh it's basically detecting the other side watch for that off in front real quick yeah yeah see that's going through to the other side and it's probably just because there's some really thin areas in this mesh I hate to think that if I have to be questioning about the rest of these parts as well these are also connecting on are also well snapping to the surface on the wrong side here and that's basically just because it's a very 
has some areas that are very thin on this mesh. But it seems like I can just grab those vertices and just pull them off a little bit. Now if I unhide the other side, Let's see how much work will I have to go through in order to get these to connect and is the other side doing it as well yeah yeah you can see just grab those push them push them forward just to make sure they are connecting on the right side All right, so the first area I'll try to connect through to the other side is on these little loops. So let's see, four there. All right, so four there, four there. And then what about four there? Are those connecting through to the other side or? One side is. Which side is? All right now, these are totally connected. So let me just give these a seam. Hide that real quick. Heck, let's alleviate a little bit of this for us. I forgot, totally forgot to do this. Give this a very slight offset. Uh, much more slight than that. Very tiny face right there. I want to get, don't like that. Delete you. All right.
I'm gonna get some get some weird errors if I don't correct this. I wonder if a smoothness putting on a uh, something like a smooth corrective would help get this all organized correctly. up to the same amount of uh, edges. Let's see. Bridge edge loop. Triangulates everything. Let's try going about a little meticulously. See ya. Take care. And real quick, are you doing anything for uh, the current challenge, or are you gonna bow out of that one to give everyone else a chance? These are actually matching up okay. Alright, so maybe we can get through this relatively unscathed. Nope, because that creates another problem for me.
See, this is the issue with those amount of edges not matching up on the other side. Hey, no problem. Hopefully, get some more time to uh, get back into streaming a little bit more. We'll see how this goes. And like I got it in the uh, in the title, maybe play some games later. We'll see. I am a little bit of an addict when it comes to Escape from Tarkov, even though, yes, I suck at it pretty badly. Okay, not that badly, I'm just a rat. That's kind of worse. I know this is still going to give me a bit of trouble, even after I apply this uh, drink wrap. Good of getting a few extra triangles in here just to make things connect together. As this part is more of a uh, organic shape. are still connecting on the other side. It's not what I want. Okay. 
so are these. See if I can't select it without it being in x-ray mode, that means that means I got some problems. through that uh this geometry that's as the edges clipping through i'm gonna need to either use some smoothness or something to just kind of uh correct all of that all right everything down here except for right here is connected okay these are still a few guys back what about this bottom Hey Kadir, what's going on? Everyone here has been doing pretty well. A few people are already gone to bed, but that's all right. And I still haven't eaten anything yet, so we'll see how much longer I last. But I'm good for now. And regardless of what you're working on, this is mainly something that I wanted to do just to experiment. I've not been getting enough of that when it comes to my own artwork lately. Just figuring out and trying some new things.
you don't experiment enough and you're just creating things that you constantly feel safe doing it gets well at least for me it gets boring really fast Uh, 3D scanning for fo for uh, for modeling. You mean like a uh, photo scan or uh, photogrammetry? I have messed around with a few, um, yeah, a few uh, photogrammetry applications. Yeesh. Something about this needs to be changed right here. Which is the uh, photogrammetry program that's like cloud-based? I haven't used it, but I mean, honestly, it's what I would probably prefer just because every... every photogrammetry program that I've tried, which ha a lot of them have worked great, it's just you need to have basically... Uh, be able to dedicate a lot of time, even if you do have a very strong PC. It just takes a lot of time to uh, process. Photoscan and photogrammetry. Now I have um, I have used the ones, which one? I think it was Reality Capture. And yeah, I took out my DSLR and went to a local nature park on a cloudy overcast day and took like hundreds and hundreds of pictures of like a piece of driftwood or a stump or something that I could realistically scan just with my own uh, just with my own camera. And yeah, I took I took all the photos and went back and processed them and it I mean it can look pretty amazing. It looks pretty amazing once you've completed all of it.
There are free ones, uh, free uh, photogrammetry and photo scanning applications out there. What is the, I think the open source one is like Meshroom. And uh, that one, okay, it, it, I tried it. It is definitely not as, uh, I would say stable as like a reality capture or what was it, AGI photo scan. But uh, if you really spend the time with it, you can get some really good results out of it. But I was having some weird problems with a few settings and a few issues that I wasn't able to figure out to make something that was more uh, practical, be that for like animation or game engine use. Yeah, I did see some of that where they've started using a photo cat, um, photo scanning in conjunction with a uh, CAD modeling. I mean, that is way, way out of my league of expertise, but it still looked very, uh, very impressive. Weird little uh, side project at the moment it is a disembodied hand in a bag how else can I describe it A weird idea for a sort of uh, video game health item, something. We'll have to see when we get to texturing, which I would I would like to try and get to do. But yeah, this whole item, at least this part right here. Pretty much all non-destructive. I mean, if I go into edit mode, this is a single plane, and everything is just piled on top of that. Solidify, subdivision, shrink wrap, another subdivision, uh, boolean. Remesh, displace, and then a smooth. <laughs> Let me toggle this. There we go. If I can get to more, uh, if I can get to some more streaming, I have the next, uh, I have the reference for the next weapon I want to start creating. So we'll see if we get to that today or not.
Yeah, I have no idea why. I just had this weird idea to do this little concept project uh, non-destructively. In fact, I, if I wasn't looking to try and make this into a game asset looking sort of thing, I could just apply uh, procedural materials right here and uh, get a cool render out of this. Maybe I should just do that. Leave it as more of a uh, concept design sort of piece. Put a um, put a decal on it by just shrink uh, shrink wrapping a plane to the front of it. That's one thing you'll see a lot of people get uh, use out of Blender for is the uh, is the concept artists. because 3D is still like really important, especially when it comes to concept design. And of course, if artists are gonna have to start learning 3D, they might as well just start with the, uh, with the free program that can do everything. Headway just getting the last of this connected. That was one of the first reasons I started uh, with Blender or any 3D applications because I would draw a lot. I did some little concept design uh, sort of work. And of course, when you're drawing a lot, you're like, oh man, how can I, uh, how can I get my shorthand perspective down a lot faster and of course my brilliant idea is ooh, I can I can just cheat at it with a 3d application of course that's pretty much what everyone does but after a while of just using uh, 3d I mean and if you go back to drawing you'll find that hey your uh, your shorthand when it comes to a uh, perspective and a lot of just the whole seeing form and seeing shapes in 3D is so much better. Like for anyone who's like even like an illustrator or a concept or a or a comic artist, uh, I would recommend at least learning a little bit of 3D software because it can be just super useful. Even if you don't think it's a skill that you're going to use like practically in any way, yeah, give it a try. You, you'd be surprised. Wow, I've missed some few things up here. We'll get it. Yeah, I'm, per I'm okay. I mean, I'll say I'm decent at drawing, and I'm pretty good at cheating stuff with uh, Blender and 3D, and turning that into a uh, 2D concept as well. However, obviously, my whole asset design right here could use some work.
Yeah, it is, and like I said, I needed some of that just to just to get creative for a little while. For, for any non-manifold geometry afterwards, but I think just about got everything connected up here. Do I have a spiral? I did make a spiral somewhere. Do you need to know how to draw to be a good modeler? So conversely, um... You know, I, I wouldn't say that either is essential or the other, but there can be a lot of benefits regardless of which discipline you are going to focus on. I think that kind of just has to do kind of with the... Uh, with kind of the technical aspects of all being of being a uh, 3D artist and more of the aesthetics that you'll learn a lot more when it comes to uh when it comes to illustration or design Cause I know there's a, a lot of 3D modelers at least from what I've seen sometimes have a difficult time thinking of themselves as as artists or even having a huge amount of uh, creative input on what they're on what they're working on and that's not the case because it it's it's all creative it's all basically just creative decision making and sometimes that creative decision making i think is something that's like mm, a bit more difficult when you're so when you're in a, a field or an area that's so much more uh, focused on uh, the technical design aspects. But it depends on what sort of uh, 3D modeling you're doing as well. Like, I would definitely think that drawing and concepting and all that is a lot more important if you're a character artist. I mean, if you're working professionally, yeah, you're going to be working with other uh, concept artists who are, handling, who are handling a lot of that putting... Um, ideas on paper for you but still you're going to need to have a firm understanding of anatomy and figure drawing and that sort of stuff is something that would really really help with that select but let's do non-manifold I don't have any non-manifold geometry. That does that mean that I've closed this all up? Okay. Now, let me see if we can correct some of this. All right.
But I know there's a few areas where things are still kind of uh, clipping through. Maybe we can go ahead and apply this uh, shrink wrap modifier at this point and see what needs to be cleaned up. Because we shouldn't be seeing stuff through the other end. But once again, if we just kind of eye it, grab stuff that's... Let's switch to normal. Now. So we don't have too many parts that are too garbled on us, but now that everything's kind of uh, closed up, it should start cooperating a little bit more. everything a bit. Gives me way too many. All right, all right. Let's see how let's see how this goes. Ah, okay. So I go out of edit mode. Yeah, I applied way too much smoothness. I wasn't seeing that. All right. No. Nope. This repeat factor is a bit too much. Okay. All right. Now, what if I turn off in front and I have the smoothness on? Is that smoothness working like I think it does? to give it a very light inflate. 
Nah, that's way too much. Mark these. Maybe instead of doing this whole retopologize part, I should have just redone the boolean on it. That probably would have been a better idea. In fact, we might just close that up and redo that real quick. Let's see. We can just delete these faces, bridge these edge loops. Yeah, quick corrections. Look at this. the same uh just reuse the same boolean object <laughs> from the previous one i know i spent way too much time on that and should have realized that a lot sooner but no big deal in fact things will come out a little bit cleaner and then we'll just have to uh do a little bit of topology cleanup from the bullion. All right, what's clipping through? One of these sides isn't where it's supposed to be. this real quick. It's been a little while. Mm. 
you know what? I'll just duplicate this real quick. Take this Boolean object. And Blender doesn't hate me. Okay. I'm going to have you after the smooth. Let's just see if this works. Okay.
All right, fairly happy with how all of that is connected. All right. Can I just merge you guys here? It's all right. All right. Hmm, we've got, got another, I don't know if I should go this far with it, but we'll see. All right, let me check.
Find us. End us. Thanks for subscribing. But you're gonna need more training. Let's see. Select similar. Oh, we're on face select. Edge select. Shift G. Bevel weight. Mark scene. Actually, we don't want all of this. Average island size, and let's pack them using UV Packmaster. Still looks okay. All right, now I got some room up here at the top, and I have some thoughts about what I can do with this, but I'm not sure that's what I want to do. I was thinking of uh, retopologizing the. Well, the sculpted hand that's inside the bag, along with the wires. And making a low poly version that'll be inside there. And you can actually have the bag be translucent. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave um, the hand model, a duplicate of the hand model in there with the wires. And I'll export that out as a separate high poly. OBJ and then use that to bake a thickness map inside of Substance Painter. So, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but ideally what you can do is that you have the that you have this bag and you of course have the baked detail where you can kind of get a good idea of what's inside the bag and then even if a light maybe shines directly on it then you might even get a silhouette of what is in there. That's the theory I'm going on. We'll see if it works. All right, I need to adjust some of these seams real quick. Dead Polish. Hey, what's going on? All 
All right, what is this? What's this? That's out oh, the outer part of this. That's better. Oh. Average island size first, then pack. Okay, that's good. Better. Cool. How's it going? Also using Blender right now, or what applications you're trying to use? Now you're starting with ZBrush. How do you like ZBrush so far? Because I really like ZBrush, but unfortunately have not had a whole lot of time or as much time as I wish I had to get to use it, but it's an awesome program. You learning it all right? There's one other detail I forgot about, but I think I can do it in Substance Painter. Yeah, yeah, you kind of need to use a uh, pen tablet for everything ZBrush. But even some of the modeling features are pretty good in ZBrush. Even so, just the fact that the uh, that the interface is very different from 3ds max and even blender and yeah a lot of it is uh a lot of it's all directed towards being uh towards using the tablet that makes it a bit more a bit more difficult you trying sculpting you're trying uh Anything for like character arts or just to uh, have to do the whole um, high poly remesh workflow. 
Because we're, uh, regardless, regardless of what you want to use it for, um, definitely recommend the uh, Michael Pavlovich YouTube channel. And like he has this really long uh, series of just intro to ZBrush on there. And at least at least the first part, first several hours is free. He has the rest on his Gumroad. And still, it's for like the older uh, ZBrush. I think it's for like 2018, but still everything in there is pretty much all applicable to the current version, as far as I know. Add. All right, this already has a triangulate modifier. All right, both parts are triangulated. So I have a preset I made for doing an export to Substance Painter. I am a freelance artist, but still probably probably the majority of what I do with my uh, daytime isn't isn't in a creative field yet, but I'm happy to work on this as much as I can. Also going to take this. Actually, I'll make it <laughs> once again. I'm going to make another duplicate of it. All right, and I'm going to get rid of this plane object, and I'm just going to take this. And we're going to do a separate bake with just the hand and the wires for a thickness map. And maybe I'm going about this the wrong way, but we'll see if it works. Like I'm theoretically expecting it will. Busy. I know I'm gonna be deliberately vague with that. I did have some freelance work to do, but uh, yeah.
I would like to be able to just get a lot more time to, to uh, dedicate into the channel. We'll see if that's uh, feasible from here. I think I'll, I think I can do the baking. Do I want to do the baking in Substance Painter, or I'll probably have to correct some of the offsets, so I'm gonna to have to do something in Marmoset. <laughs> can you expect me to stream regularly? I would hope so. I would hope so. I hate being able to not being able to promise that I'm gonna be able to, but I mean it's what I would like. To be doing. group. Right, I'm not going to need multiple texture sets. We're just doing the normal here. This HDRI. Give me a different sky. Thanks. I, I know I'm going a little bit more, uh, a little bit more ostentatious on the background right now. But I thought, why not? I had all this stuff just lying around, so why not use it? And that baked. It's a little bit frayed on the edges, so let me see. Maybe if I. Uh,
Maybe I can increase max offset a little bit more. I'm just worried that that's all gonna get clipped up, but I can paint. I can paint that stuff back. So let's go ahead and lower this value back down. That low. What is it? It is obviously a hand in a bag. Oh, forgot to switch that all to smooth. Did I? Let me see. Back to Blender. Or do I need to uh, duplicate everything? Get it to show smooth. Smooth it. All right. What? Oh. Texas originally in Houston and right now I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I know. Exciting. anything in Marmoset on me. Watching it that late, just me, 3D modeling, a hand in a bag. Okay. I thank you for that. Something about that doesn't look right. Maybe I need to uh, disable the triangulation on the high poly export because I know I have that uh, tick box enabled. Let me try that again. All right, so once again, export this to OBJ, untick triangulate faces, export.
All right, I think that went. There we go, now it's smooth. Uh, it depends. I know some people find it more difficult than others, but I think a lot of people who are semi-proficient at one usually have a pretty easy time transitioning to another. It's usually just kind of getting around the different ways either program does the same thing. I know I've got, I know I used to get a lot of people in my comments who were just always asking me how to translate 3ds max or maya things into blender and it can be frustrating at first especially when you're trying to learn a new program and you're just trying to figure out the basics of tools that you uh that you already understand hey hernan thanks for subscribing Okay, that looks like it's baked. All right, so I'll be able to bring this into uh, Substance Painter in just a moment. All right, now I need to dip out real quick for a quick rest up. I'll be right back.
exported a normal map. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully can get to more this week. Take care. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, forgot to apply the right materials to both objects. These are probably okay. It's only gonna be a 2k map, but we'll see how long these take. Do by switch it to by mesh name. We're not putting in a high poly uh, model. We'll do self. We'll do self occlusion set to always. Curvature position. All right, let me see how this goes. Did I set that to a 2K resolution? Yes, I did. Okay. that that wasn't there before it's 
probably because I had something disabled. What did I disable? I had the triangulation. should keep it solved. Don't know why it didn't. Try this again, export that. Let's see if this one this triangulation also checked. And it goes back to normal. Okay. Few other issues, but something I might be able to correct another time.
do a quick height detail pass. And yes, I am a total pleb, just totally using and abusing the default uh, Substance Painter Alphas. with these uh, layers all I do is I create a fill layer I hold down alt click height because that's the only uh, channel that I want for this layer give it a black mask which I then paint into create all my details and you can basically create uh, layers of painted details on a single uh, fill layer by just constantly adding another paint to it basically add another paint effect to a single layer. You can basically just keep piling up layers within layers within layers in Substance Painter. And I am using a 
older version. I mean, not that old. I haven't uh, renewed my uh, maintenance for a while. This is a substance painter, algorithmic sus uh, substance painter, not not Adobe. Looking through these alphas to see which one is appropriate for the effect I'm trying to do right here.
Okay, now I know the next thing that I wanted to do was uh, experiment with this little thickness bake. I don't know if this will work. No, that didn't work. It's not like I thought it would. Actually, be able to do it in Blender or maybe Marmoset. Okay, well, you know what? Probably gonna. Back to this. All right, so just to ditch this now for a second, I am going to, let's see, I could, I could cut the stream off, but I also had another uh, project I wanted to get started on, and I might as well, might as well do the basics. And that's to get started on my next on the next uh, little weapon that I want to work on. And I'm going to start. As I usually do, I'm going to drop in a scale reference. And this is for the main barrel of the gun. on it.
So that is about our barrel length. All right, and the next gun that I want to create, I'm going to drop in the reference. Uh, do you do manual high poly creation or use the remesh tool? Um, I am basically started using remesh now for probably the vast majority of stuff. As opposed to just doing uh, subdivision and bevel high polys, which you can still get uh, very good models using that, but uh, there's definitely a quality difference when you use the uh, remesh workflow. All right, so the next weapon project I'm doing is going to be a Allen and Thurder pepper box revolver. And it's going to be one that is far more ornate than this example. This is basically going to be my base reference, but uh, I had saw, I had seen at an antique gun store this really, really ornate uh, pepper box revolver. Which, let me see if I can bring up my reference. I don't know if I'm really going to get started on this today, but uh, we'll get the basic scene uh, set up. So I know that might seem a little bit boring, but I'll show you kind of why I wanted to create this. So let's bring up my pure ref. And this is the one that I actually photographed. Which I really like. There's a lot. This is going to be one that is, uh, once again, much more fun to be texturing. Especially when it comes to uh, trying to get all this uh, engraving detail, which is the main reason I'm picking this one. And also this kind of this sheen, you can kind of notice this glistering sheen almost of like a uh, an oil or weapons lubricant used on this. In addition to that, one thing that um, wasn't on this model that I saw, which I also would like to uh, possibly interject, is you'll see that there were a few models that they made in which the screw, which holds on the main uh, revol uh, revolving barrel portion of the pistol, can be uh, replaced with this nifty little jabbing uh, bayonet, which I actually thought was kind of funny looking, but I'll be damned if I don't include that on this model. So yeah, and uh, probably even go into a few videos on how to get this sort of engraving detail done because I talked a little bit more about, I talked previously in some of my other videos about like stamping uh, trademarks and stuff in Substance Painter. But of course, this is something that is a, a bit more ornate. And while the modeling might seem kind of simple at a first glance, I know that there are a few challenges to 
could get with certain parts of this. I know I can drop in real quick is we'll do a we'll do a circle and we'll do 12 vertices circles scale this way down I'd say I'm decent at Substance Painter, still probably a lot that I need to learn when it comes to using that program, but... And there's a lot of other uses that I would like to get out of a Substance Painter. Like, I've mainly only used it for the whole weapon design purposes, and there's just a whole lot more that you can do. Okay, that's basically the right scale. All right, but the ball is like, it's like 8.15, we'll, we'll, we'll say 8.1 millimeters. How did I learn it? Tutorials and stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah, who's, um, who's a good tutorial instructor when it comes to... Oh, um, Christopher Deese. He's kind of, kind of a funny guy. Uh, he had... I know he has tutorials on, uh, Nauman Workshop, and he has one on, um, Art Station's, uh, learning section. I think he's, like, a technical artist at Naughty Dog. He does some really good courses, and I think he also did like a crash course into Substance Designer or something like that. I like a lot of his, uh, I like his videos and I really like his artwork. This is the point where, once again, I'm trying to create something real, so I'm going to be glancing over a whole bunch to my reference on the other monitor. Oh, why am I in object mode? All right.
Uh, uh, D E E S E. Let's see. I think that's an accurate spacing right there. me.
Of course. Why are these flipping together really close? No, I do not want that. I do not want that merge limit activated.
Switch that from the 3D Courser to median point, scale Y0, so it's all completely lush. And even though the back end's got to get closed, we'll treat it like this for the time being. Actually, probably just when did that merge limit get turned back on? Yeah, when did that get reactivated? That's how we know this is not completely fucked. Alright, that merging distance is starting to drive me crazy. How do I disable that?
All right, well, I'll have to figure that out sooner or later. get started and probably pick up on this tomorrow as well as working on my little hand in the bag project but i think i'll cut it off here because i actually need to eat something all right cool thank you to everyone who was hanging out during the stream and hopefully i can get around to a lot more of this and we'll see what else we do this week maybe some tarkov or other gaming or something if you want, go ahead and check out the Discord. We got the community challenge currently going for the Crafty Assassin challenge. Which, yeah, that'll be ending soon, but we'll have a whole lot more coming up after that. Thank you to everyone for watching. Take care.